Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar on the introduction of WSO2 updates. My name is Savidu, I'm a senior software engineer here at WSO2 and I have Shafana and Akif here with me who will take you through this session giving you an introduction to WSO2 updates uh, 2.0. So before we begin, let me quickly give you an overview of what we will be talking about in this session. So we will be starting off with an introduction to updates 2.0, talking about the history of WSO2 updates and what's new in updates 2.0. Then we will be talking about the update tool client, which is basically the client side tool that we will be using to take updates. And after that, we will do a quick demo on something called the Updates Portal, uh, which is a website that you can use to get details, of, details on the updates that we have taken, as well as the updates that are available to us. And finally, we'll talk about how updates can be run in different types of deployments. So first, we'll explain how updates can be delivered in uh, distributed deployments with tools such as um, Ansible and Puppet. And then we'll see how we can update our deployments if we are running on environments such as um, AWS, Docker, or Kubernetes. All right. So before we begin let me quickly explain why we need updates in the first place so one of the main reasons wso2 gives updates is because we continue to improve our products whether it be bug fixes security fixes or improvements and additionally every major release of a wso2 product is followed by a series of updates and most importantly, we want each and every one of our users to have the best experience when using our products. And we do not want people to you know, get stuck because of a bug that we have already fixed. So to give you um, a quick history of how the WSO2's update model has evolved over the years. So all this time we have been using an update model called WUM. So we started off with WAM 1 in uh, 2016 and introduced WAM 2 in 2018. And um, later in the same year, we released WAM 3 along with another client side tool called the in-place tool. So all the way from 2018 to now, we have been using a combination of WAM and in-place tool to run updates on WSO2 products. And the fact that we uh, we have two tools that essentially does the same thing has been really confusing to our users. So instead of WAM and in place, we, we're getting rid of both of them and introducing a new client side tool called the update tool. So again, I, uh, I will talk, about, talk um, more about this in detail after a few slides, but in a nutshell, the update tool is an executable that will be inside the product pack and this particular product pack can be downloaded from the website so before we get into the update tool i want to take some time and explain how we got here so the very first revisions of wso2 updates had a single client side tool called wum and the wum tool had some major shortcomings that eventually led to the introduction of the in place tool so for example, um, let's say uh, whenever we get the latest update using WAM, we get an entirely new product pack distribution. So this means that a user would have to either apply all of their configurations again uh, in the updated distributions, or they would have to go ahead and manually copy each and every single updated file in the new um, distribution to their working setup. So this introduces a lot of points of failure where users could apply their uh, configurations incorrectly. So with the introduction of in place, the tool automatically applies updates on top of the user's pack and updates all of the files and configurations automatically. And um, when updating a product pack, there could be cases where an update is being applied to a particular part of the code uh, the user has made some custom changes to. So in this case, this would be a conflict and uh, the in-place tool is capable of identifying conflicts and it has a mechanism to resolve them. So let's talk about the update tool. How is this better than in-place? 
So for starters, when we update a pack using the in-place tool, it needs to download the base version of the product as well as each and every individual update. Um, so this is done so that it can find the effective file change that needs to be applied to bring the product pack to an updated state. So we no longer have to worry about any of that in the update tool. So details of the effective file change will be computed by the server side components of the tool and it will only have to download individual files that are needed to get to the updated state. So this means that there's a significantly lower bandwidth usage as the tool will be downloading far fewer resources and the amount of time that it takes to update a product pack is much faster as well. All right, so um, now that we have an idea about the new update tool that comes along with um, updates 2.0, let me explain the timelines in terms of how we plan to release the new update model and deprecate the old one. So on the 10th of October, which is um, two days from now, updates 2 will be released. Along with this release, we will give all of our users who are using WAM and in-place update models um, some grace period to move on, move towards updates 2.0. And on the 10th of November, we will begin the deprecation process of WAM and in-place. So during this time, we will also extend the grace period for users to switch over to the new update model. And on uh, 10th February 2021, updates 2 will become the sole update mechanism so up until um, up until this point we will be creating updates for both WAM and updates to update models um, however after this point forward we will not create any updates for WAM. so from 10th february to somewhere in um, mid 2021 we will give all users some time to switch to the new update model. And thereafter, WAM and in-place will reach its um, end of life and will no longer be available. So that is how we plan to release the new update model and deprecate WAM and in-place until they reach their uh, EOL. So apart from that, updates, uh, uh, what's new in updates 2.0? We use the newly designed update tool to deliver fixes through updates and something called hot fixes. So for most of you, this may be the first time that you're hearing about hot fixes. So we will be going into a lot of detail about hot fixes in the next few slides. And I will explain everything that you need to know about them. And the next um, big improvement in the introduction uh, is the introduction of update levels. So in WAM and in place, we have been using timestamps sort of as a metric to describe how updated a pack is. So if we want to update one of our packs, we might say something like, you know, um, take the API manager 310 pack and update it to a timestamp like 1593 something something, which is uh, extremely confusing to anyone using WAM. So, and we also run into issues like, for example, if we have a timestamp like T, what is the timestamp we must go to to get to the previous or the next update level? So with updates 2.0, we have put all of that confusion aside and gone with simple update levels. So updated packs will now have update levels like API Manager 3105, 3106, and so on. Also, so in addition to what uh, we talked about, we are also following all of the proper standards and protocols when it comes to the process of delivering updates. <clears throat> delivering updates. So we are in the process of becoming CNCF uh, tough compliant as well when it comes to our update process. And also we will be creating uh, we'll be creating update releases for all products um, once every two weeks, so on a bi-weekly basis. So uh, of course this is with the exception of critical security issues where we will release updates as soon as possible and all users will be notified of such updates. All right, so let me take you through what are updates and hotfixes. 
So I'm not going to talk much about updates since the concept of updates really hasn't changed from one. However, what we are all here to talk about is hotfixes. So I'm pretty sure that again, for most of you, this is the first time that you're hearing about it. And basically hotfixes will be used to deliver quick fixes to urgent or production critical issues reported by users. So hotfixes are basically fixes that are unique to an individual issue that is reported by a user. And another important thing to note is that whatever fee, uh, fix we make through a hotfix will be pa passed along to other users through an update as well. So talking about hotfixes in more detail, uh, these are fixes that get issued to users in the form of a zip file. So if a user reports a critical issue, what we do is we develop a fix for this and generate a zip file containing this fix. And all we have to do is attach this zip file to the Jira ticket and the users can apply this fix to their pack using the update tool. Okay, and um, I will actually show you how this works when we do the demo. And another important thing to note is that uh, what we recommend for users of WSO2 products is that they uh, should take updates as often as they can. So it's also important to note that you can't take updates while hotfixes are applied to the pack. And also hotfixes are valid for a specific update level. So um, what you see here is what a typical hotfix zip file looks like. So what you see here is the um, user's Jira ID the hotfix is assigned to. Then we have the product as well as the version along with the update level. So then it says that this is the first hotfix that is issued for this particular user. Um, so for example, if a user reports an issue for a pack like API Manager 3105, we will create the hotfix for the 3105 update level. And if for some reason they update the pack to let's say 3106, they will no longer be able to apply this hotfix. All right, so now let's move on to talking about the update tool itself. So if you're familiar with the in-place tool, how the new update tool works is very similar to in-place. So we have CLI distributions in each product pack for Linux, Mac, and Windows operating systems. And using the tool relevant to your operating system, we can apply updates and hotfixes on top of customized uh, distributions. So if you're updating, uh, if you're updating a pack that has a lot of customizations, there's a chance that you may run into uh, conflicts where the part of the file being updated has some customized changes. So the update tool has the capability of a capability to report conflicts like this and has a system in place to resolve them. And also whenever we apply an update or a hotfix, the update tool automatically takes backups of the current pack. And if the user runs into any issues after applying the update, the tool has the capability of reverting itself to the state before taking the backup. And finally, I want to highlight that the update tool has its own update mechanism. So every time we run the tool, it will check if it has any updates. And if it does, it will automatically update itself without any intervention from the user. All right, so now let's talk about some, uh, talk about the commands in the update tool. So if I actually go over to the um, help, command of the update tool. Um, we can see all of the commands that the update tool supports. So what you see here, all of this, is uh, the commands that you can run with the update tool. And what you see here are the most uh, important ones uh, that you will have to remember. So if you just run in, uh, if you just run the update tool like so, um, it will update the pack. And let's say you ran into some conflicts during this update. What we can do is we can resolve these conflicts and run the same command, but this time you give a continue flag. And uh, what this does is it will um, apply the resolved conflicts to the pack. And let's say something goes wrong during the update. 
then what we can do is we can use the revert flag to go back to the state before this particular update was taken. Also, similar to updates, we can run the apply hotfix command to apply a hotfix to the back. And just like updates, you may run into configs while applying hotfixes. So you can resolve them and rerun the command using the continue flag uh, to apply the resolve concept. And finally, what, uh, what you can do is you can run the revert hotfix command to go back to the state before the last applied hotfix was taken. So you can't apply updates to a pack that has a hotfix already applied to it. So in this case, if uh, someone wants to get the latest updated pack, what they can do is they can revert, uh, they can use the, this um, revert hotfix command to remove the hotfix and then update the pack. So during some of the sessions that we had before, a lot of people had questions about how hotfixes would work um, if we are working with um, de deployment pipelines. So I will not actually go into detail about that right now, but uh, Shafana will explain everything about that when she talks about the uh, <clears throat> when she talks about updates 2.0 in distributed deployments. So we also have another command called current state. And as the name suggests, um, it is used to update the current pack. And you will see me using uh, using this a lot during the demo. But basically, uh, we can use this command to get the current update level as well as details of the hotfixes that we have applied. And finally, we have the create Docker command, which can be simply used to create a Docker image of your setup that has all of the updates and hotfixes that we have applied. All right, so the update tool returns some um, specific exit codes depending on the result of the operation. So for example, if the command uh, we ran executed successfully, we would get an exit code of zero. And if the update tool updates itself, we will get an exit code of two and we will get three if the command runs into any conflicts and four if we choose to revert any of our changes. So let me show you how the update tool works. All right, so what I have here is an API manager 310 pack and inside this bin directory, you can see that we have three files called um, WSO2 update Darwin, WSO2 update Linux, and WSO2 update windows.exe. So these are the OS specific executables for the update tool. So since I'm on a Mac, what I will be doing is I will be running the update Darwin command. So actually before getting an update, one thing that you could do is you can check if we have any updates that are available. So you can do that by running the check command. So what I'll do is I will run the check command. And if you're running the update tool for the very first time, what it will do is it will ask for your credentials. So I will give mine. As you can see, it's, it has authenticated my account and it will start checking if the update tool has any new versions. And um, all right, so let me explain what you see right here. So if, you're, you, uh, if you have used the in-place tool before, you will see this message when running the update tool for the, uh, for the first time. And basically what it says is that running the update tool will move your system to the new update model, replacing all of the resources in the old model. So in this case, we will just say yes to this. And what it will do is it will continue to check if we have any updates. So it will say checking for updates and it will say that the latest update, update level is 3102. So, uh, and another thing that I want to show you is um, so remember that uh, when we ran the check command, we were asked if we want to switch to the new update model. So you'd notice that when we uh, listed all of the files in the bin directory earlier, we used to have three uh, executables called update Darwin, update Linux, and update windows.exe. So 
Uh, keep in mind that these are different from the WSO2 update, Darwin, Linux, and Windows uh, executables. So uh, these three executables were the um, executables related to the in-place tool. So uh, when we said yes to this prompt, what happened was we moved over from the uh, old update model into the new one. So when we said yes, what happened? Uh, what the tool did was it removed everything related to the old update model, and now we are completely switched over to the new update model. So um, what we can uh, uh, also see here is that um, from the check command, it said that our latest update level is 3102, which means that we have some updates that are available to us and we can uh, actually go ahead and take some updates. Uh, so what I'll show you now is how we can just get a simple regular update. So all you have to do is to simply run the WSO2 update Darwin command and it will begin updating our pack to the latest update level. So when you run the command, what it will do is it will check for updates. Uh, it will check if the update tool has a newer version, but since I'm already running on the latest update version of the tool, uh, it will not update itself. And then it will also say that the latest update level is um, 3102, all that. And then you would notice that it starts creating a backup of your current setup. And once it has finished creating a backup of the setup, it will download all of the files that are needed to get to the updated state. So in this case, we had 11 files and it downloaded all of those 11 files and it will start updating the product. And it will say that the API Manager 310 pack has been um, <clears throat> updated successfully. Also, uh, you would notice that our complete update had 11 files and all of them were downloaded um, they were downloaded pretty quickly. So the entire update process was very quick, uh, very quick and may have taken us somewhere around like, uh, what, 30 seconds? Um, so if you are familiar with the in-place tool, you would notice that the amount of time taken to update this pack is significantly faster here. So now my API manager pack has been updated to the latest update level. So like I said before, uh, as you can see here, we, it says that uh, the latest update level is 3102. And so if you want to see it for yourself, what you could do is you could run a command called the current state to get information about the current state of the product pack. So let me run that. And as you can see, it says that um, the product is um, API Manager 3102, and as of right now, we have not applied any hotfixes. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the pack before I took this particular update. So, and the way I can do that is by running the revert flag. So the way you run the revert flag is you say WSO2 update Darwin, and you do dash dash revert. And so basically what this will do is it will take you back to the pack before we took this update. So let me run the revert command. And so what the revert command does is it will um, remove the pack that we have now and replace it with a backup. So you'd remember that when we ran the update, it uh, took a backup of our pack. So what happens when you run revert is that it replaces this pack with the backup that we took. So this is a process that could take a bit of time. So let's wait until it completes. All right, so it says that uh, we have successfully reverted to the previous state. So um, actually one thing that you, uh, I want to show you, so if you try to list all the files in the uh, bin directory now, it will say that the directory is empty. And that is because, like I said before, when you're reverting, what happens is it replaces, so basically it removes the pack that you have and replaces it with the backup. So if you just um, go out of this and come back and try to list all the files, you will be able to see everything. All right, so now uh, we have reverted our update level. So if I try to run the current state command now, it should show that, um, Okay, uh, all right, so the reason that we have an authentication failure here 
is that um, when we reverted, our tokens uh, were replaced or uh, they were removed, right? So removed, and uh, so which is why it's asking us to enter the password again. So I'll just um, enter my password. All right, so as you can see, now our version is 3100. So before we ran the revert command, our version was 3102. Now it's 3100. So, um, all right, so now let's see how we can use the update tool to apply hotfixer. So um, in uh, one of my directories, so in this directory, I have three hotfix files. So um, this, this, uh, these are what hotfix files look like. So, um, for example, uh, you see, uh, so basically it's a zip file that a user would use to download from their Jira ticket. So, for example, um, now in this particular example, you can see the Jira ID. Then we have the product name as well as the update level, which is um, 3101. So, again, if you take a look at the name of the hotfix, you can see that the update level for this is 3101. And you would also notice that when we ran the current state command last time, our product was at 3100. So this particular hotfix is for a pact at the update level of 3101, but we are not at that update level. But um, let's just uh, try to apply this hotfix and see what happens. So the way you apply hotfixes is you say WSO2 update and apply hotfix and give the path of the hotfix that you are going to apply. So in this case, we are going to go ahead and apply the first hotfix. So if I run the apply hotfix command now, it should give me an error saying that, uh, yep, there you go. It says that the update level is invalid. The product should be at the update level of one to apply the hotfix, but it's at update level zero. So what we'll do is we will update our pack to the update level of one. Um, so in order to be able to apply our hotfix, we need to update up a pack to the update level one. So if you want to update a pack to a specific update level, what you could do is you could use the level flag and you could say that we want to update to update level one. Another thing that we could do is um, we could also say we want to update to 3101 as well. And so both of them, they mean the exact same thing. So it will update our pack to update uh, API manager 3101. So let me go ahead and update it. So as you can see, it says that the latest update level is 3101. And just like last time, it will start creating a backup of our pack. It will download all of the files related to the update. It will apply all of those files and it will say that the update has been, the pack has been updated successfully. So if I go ahead and run the current state command now, we can see that our product is at the update level of 3101. All right, so um, now that we are at the 3101 update level, let's try uh, going ahead and applying our hotfix. And as you can see, it did not give us an error like last time. And it says that it's going to create a backup uh, of the hot, uh, of the pack before taking the hotfix, just like updates. And then um, it will say that uh, it has successfully created a backup. It's going to apply the hotfix and hotfix has been applied successfully. So now if we run the current state command, we can see that uh, apart from the update level, it also says that there's one hotfix that is applied on this pack. And it also gives the uh, date and time in which this hotfix was applied. So this particular hotfix was applied at 10.01, 10 which is my time right now. And it also gives the name of the hotfix that was applied. So, so how about we just go ahead and apply another hotfix and see what happens. So earlier we applied hotfix one. I'm going to go ahead and apply hotfix two this time. So let's see what happens. All right, so again, there were no issues. It updated the pack to hotfix two. If I try to get the current state now, it will say that uh, the update level is 3101 and there are two hotfixes applied to this pack and you can see uh, that it's hotfix one and hotfix two. 
All right, so another interesting feature that I talked about earlier is that the update tool lets you create a Docker image of our updated product pack. So say that you have applied a bunch of hotfixes to your setup, uh, just like we did right now, and we want to create a containerized deployment of your updated pack. So all you have to do is run the update command and run the create Docker command. And basically what this will do is it will begin to build a Docker image of your product setup, which has all of the updates and hotfixes that you have applied so far. So this is a process that could um, take a bit of time. So let's un wait until this uh, completes as well. All right, so now it says that um, building our Docker image and the uh, Docker image API manager 3101 hotfix 2 was built successfully. So if I just go ahead and type, get the Docker images and go all the way up, you can see that I have applied API manager 3101 hotfix 2. I have basically built a Docker image of API manager 3101 hotfix 2, uh, which is um, 16 seconds ago. All right, so um, uh, as you can see, so as of right now, we have applied two hotfixes so far. So if we want to just go ahead and uh, let's say we want to remove one of them or the latest hotfix that we applied, which is hotfix two, um, what we can do is we can run the revert hotfix command. So what you do is you say revert hotfix. And uh, what you need to keep in mind is what the revert hotfix to uh, revert hotfix command would do is it will remove the last hotfix that you applied. So remember that the last hotfix that we applied was hotfix two. So when we run the revert hotfix command, what it should do is it should remove the hotfix two that we applied. And basically what the revert command does is it just replaces your pack with the backup that it took um, when you applied hotfix two. So um, again, this uh, the entire process of replacing a pack with a backup uh, is a bit time consuming. So let's wait until it finishes. All right, so it says that the hotfix is reverted successfully. So again, um, like the revert command last time, if I try to list all of my files, it will not show anything. So if I just um, go back and come back to list on my files, you can see everything. So now if I try to get the current state. All right, so what happens is now earlier we used to have two hotfixes and now we just have the one hotfix. So, um, but I'm just going, uh, so yeah, one more thing that I want to show, uh, show is the fact that we cannot update a pack when hotfixes are already applied. So if I try to just go ahead and update the pack now, what would happen is it will give me an error saying that the pack cannot be update, updated as it contains hotfixes. So please revert the existing hotfixes using the revert hotfix command, which is um, exactly what we will do. So we will run the command and say revert hotfix, and we will revert the existing hotfix. Again, um, let's wait until this process completes. All right, so our hotfix has been reverted. Let me just go out of this and come back. And if I try to get the current state now, it will say that there are no hotfixes applied on this pack. So now if I try to go ahead and take my update, it, should, it shouldn't give me any errors. And it will say that the latest update is 3102 and it has one update applied on top of 3101. So again, like as usual, it will start creating a backup. It will start downloading all of the files and it will say that the product has been updated successfully. So if I just go ahead and get the current state, you can see that we are back or we have updated to the update level of 3102. So one um, final thing about the update tool that I want to mention is that if we head on over to the updates directory, we can see that we have a, a directory called logs. 
if I go into logs and uh, logs, you can see that we have a file that has all of the logs uh, in verbose about uh, everything related to the updates that we took. So if I try to, um, if you take a look at this log, you can see everything that uh, went on while taking the updates. So what uh, we would like to recommend is that if anything goes wrong during the update process, you can take a look at these log files, which are, of course, debug logs. Or what you could do is you could create a Jira ticket and attach this log file, and we will be more than happy to help you out with uh, any issue that you're having. All right, so yeah, that is it when it comes to the update tool. So now I want to quickly take you through what is called the updates portal. So the updates portal is basically a web interface that allows um, customers to see information about the updates that they have taken. So if I head on over to the updates portal and sign in. So what you see right here are the update information uh, for my account. So um, however, if someone else logs in with their account, they would see information related to the WSO2 products that um, they are working with. So you can see that I have been working with the products of um, IS570, EI650, and API Manager 260. And you can see my uh, uh, all of the current update level, the current update levels of the products that I'm using, as well as the update levels that are available to me. So if we click on, uh, if we click to see the updates that we have already installed. Um, so for example, so if I want to see the updates that we just installed for API Manager, we will see something like this. So these are all of the updates that I have taken for API Manager. And if I click on any of the buttons here, we can see more details about the updates. So we can see the see a description of the updates and the bug fixes that were um, addressed by this particular update. And um, the uh, we can also see instructions related to this particular update. So if I go back and um, so let's say we want to see the updates that are newly available to us. So if I go ahead here. We can see all of the updates that are available to <clears throat> me for uh, identity server. So for IS570, these are all of the updates that are available to me. So if I want to get some more details about a particular update, I can click on that. And I can get some, um, get a description and as well as the issues that this particular update addresses as well as um, the instructions related to the update. All right, so that is it um, in terms of the um, updates, uh, in terms of uh, the update tool as well as the updates portal. So um, to uh, give you a quick summary of what we talked about, um, we started off with a bit of history about WSO2 updates, and we saw how we got here. And then we talked about the update tool and got to know uh, got to see how we can work with updates and hotfixes. And then we saw how uh, we can use the updates portal to get information on the updates that we have taken so far, as well as the updates that are available to us. So I will now hand over the presentation over, uh, over to Shafana, who will take you through how we can work with updates 2.0 in um, distributed deployments. So over to you, Shafana. Okay, uh, thank you, Savindu. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Shafana Safwan. Uh, I'm a software engineer at WSO2. So today in this session, I will be talking about how updates 2.2 can be used in your distributed deployments. Uh, so before moving on to the distributed dis deployments, first I will talk about how current the in-place or the WAM tool can be migrated to the update tool. So this migration is a very simple task which requires no manual effort. Uh, so the update client tool is delivered to you through a WAM update. And applying the WAM update onto the product pack will install the update tool inside the product home bin directory. So to receive updates through 
use uh, through the new updates 2.0 tool you only need to run the update command using the tool so just consider the example on the screen so let's say that you have a api manager 260 pack so its current state is it uh, a two uh, wso2 am 260 so after you apply the update command using the update tool the pack will be updated to the new level wso2 am 2601 which will introduce the new update level one that complies with updates 2.0 uh, so each and every time you apply an update or a hot fix your product pack will be updated accordingly and one thing to note is that soon after installing the update tool if you run the update tool to update the pack the tool will notify you to run the update command after 14 days so this is because, as I said earlier, the update tool is delivered to you through a WAM update. So along with this, you will also receive all the latest updates. So if even if you try to update the pack after installing the tool, there will be no updates available for you at that moment. As also Savith said earlier, since WSO2 releases updates every two weeks, you can run the update tool after 14 days of its first installation to receive any updates to your pack. Okay, uh, so moving on, in your deployments, you may have different automation scripts written to automate the update process of your deployment. So how can this update tool be used with automation scripts? So if you see, the update tool supports the use of flags for input prompt values and different exit codes for commands, which can be used to determine the status of the executed command. So consider the example on the screen for input flag values. WSO2 update command requires the username and the password as input values. So if you need to use the update command in your automation script, you can use the minus minus username minus minus password flag or minus u and minus p password, uh, username and password flags in your automation scripts to automate this command. So similarly, you can also use the exit codes of the commands to determine the next step of the automation scripts. So earlier, Savidu explained different exit codes, like uh, you have zero for success, success, successfully executed command and one for a failure. And similarly, there are other exit codes uh, for self-update. Uh, so consider the example, uh, I have added a small code snippet. So let's say you want to update your product pack. So you have the update command at first and you check the ex uh, exit store code of the update command. If the exit code is equal to two, then you apply the update command again. That is because the exit code two means the update tool itself has been self-updated. So if you need to update the product pack, the update command need to be executed again. Okay, so moving on to the next topic. Now I will talk about how distributed deployments with Puppet or Ansible can be updated. So this approach is very simple and this is also similar to the existing approach that you might be having with in place and one. So consider a deployment with a server node and two agent nodes. So before applying any updates, let's say the server node and the two agent nodes are at a.b.c level. You can, you can use the update tool and update the server node, update the server node. So this will update the server node from a.b.c level to a.b.c.1 level, which will introduce the new update level one. So similar to how any other configurations are applied from the server node to agent node in configuration management tool, you can apply these changes to the agents. And this will, this will update again the agent nodes to the new update level a.b.c.1. So not just with Puppet or Ansible, the similar like approach can be used with any other configuration management to update the product pack. So now let's see how distributed deployments on AWS can be updated. So WSO2 provides cloud formation scripts and pre-configured Amazon machine images to roll up a product deployment. To manage product configurations, these cloud formation scripts uses configuration management tool. In WSO2, we commonly use 
Puppet or Ansible, but in your deployment, you may use a different configuration tool, management tool as well. But the important thing to note here is that no matter what the configuration management tool is used to update the deployment, you can follow the same approach I explained in the previous slide. Use the configuration management tool, update the server node, and apply the changes to urge and nodes, which is very simple again. So moving on, I also want to talk about how AWS pipeline deployments can be updated. So I will quickly brief you about the pipeline. WSO to AWS pipeline is a pre-configured pipeline that can be used for continuous integration and continuous deployment of WSO2 products. AWS pipeline provides tools and scripts to roll up the deployment. As indicated on the architecture diagram, pipeline uses three main GitHub repositories that are used to set up the set up the deploy set up the run uh, pipeline and also to deploy the artifacts the configuration repository and the cloud formation deployment repository will contain the scripts that are needed to uh, set up the pipeline and the environments and the artifact source repository will contain the artifacts that need to be deployed into each of the environment so each time the pipeline is triggered, new artifacts and artifact changes to the artif from in the artifacts repository will be deployed to the environments. So product pack, all, product pack update also happens seamlessly through the pipeline with no manual intervention. When you trigger the pipeline, it will build a product pack with the latest update applied and bake that, bake that updated product pack into an Amazon machine image and then on earth, that machine image will be deployed on each of your environments. So it is ensured that each time the pipeline is triggered, the environments are updated to the latest level. This update happens through a script in the pipeline. So migration of your pipeline to update Studio 2 is a matter of updating this specific script. When it comes to new pipeline deployments, WSO2 will release a new pipeline version that complies with updates 2.0. Also note that this new pipeline version will include the CI/CD approach for applying hotfixes along with updates into your environments. For your existing pipeline deployments, WSO2 again will provide a sample script with the new update commands, which will make the migration very much easier and less hassle-free for you. But if you still do face any issues, you can always contact us through JIRA, and we are happy to help you through the migration process. So that's all from my end for today's session. As a quick recap, uh, I talked about how you can easily migrate to w updates 2.0 from current in place or one tool, and then how distributed deployments with Puppet and Ansible can be updated, and also then about updating distributed deployments on AWS and as well as AWS pipeline. So now Arkif will take on the session and he will talk about how updates 2.0 can be used in containerized deployments. Arkif, over to you. Thank you, Shafana. Uh, hi all, I'm Arkif, software engineer at WSO2. So for the next few minutes, I'll be discussing the topic uh, update Sudato in containerized environments. So in the case of containerized environments such as Docker, the process change when migrating to update Sudato is uh, very minimal. This is because WSO2 builds and delivers Docker images corresponding to each update level as soon as they are released. So if you are in a container environment such as Docker or Kubernetes, this is as simple as changing the image tag to correspond to the latest level. Uh, the only notable change here is the use of update levels instead of timestamps in the versioning of uh, Docker images. This new tagging me uh, mechanism is more human readable when compared to the previous model. It is also possible to always stay on the latest update level by pointing to the image which does not contain an update level, such as uh, WSO2 IES 580. And also if there is a need to build custom images due to some requirements like adding artifacts 
the recommended approach is to use the WSO2 image as the base so that you inherit the relevant updates into the custom image. Uh, when it comes to Kubernetes, uh, we already have a CI-CD pipeline solution available called the WSO2 Kubernetes pipeline. It is an easy to use solution to set up a CI-CD workflow for WSO2 products on Kubernetes. Uh, to give a brief overview of the pipeline, it packages into a Helm chart, a set of tools and configurations that can be deployed into a Kubernetes cluster. This includes a Jenkins instance to build and uh, build Docker images and handle uh, Helm charts. Spinnaker, which is a continuous deployment tool used to deploy the products into the cluster. We also have uh, Elasticsearch stack uh, for logging and also Prometheus for monitoring. Uh, the mechanism for delivering updates in this pipeline is on a given schedule, a cron job will fetch the latest updated image from the WSO2 private Docker uh, registry. And uh, it, it is used to build a custom image. So this custom image is defined by a Docker file that is provided in the artifact source repository. So the built image will contain the updates as well as your customizations, and then it is pushed to your private Docker registry of your choosing. So once you have pushed it to your private Docker registry, the continuous deployment tool will detect this change and propagate this change onto your environments. Uh, that's all I had to say regarding updates to the to in uh, containerized environments. I'd like to reiterate, reiterate some points regarding why you should migrate to updates 2.0. So update Surato is the culmination of years of experience that we have gained from uh, previous tools such as InPlace and WAM. It provides an enhanced and refined update experience for users. Some major improvements to note are the ability to update products faster and consume less bandwidth by downloading only the effective file change and a human readable format for update versioning by the use of update levels instead of update uh, timestamps. And it also adheres to proper standards and protocols. And we also hope to be compatible with the CNCF tough standards. It is also, uh, it also makes it easy to be adapted into deployment pipelines as we explained with some examples such as the AWS and the Kubernetes pipelines. Uh, it also makes it easy to integrate with other custom pipelines that you might have uh, built yourselves. So to conclude, I'd like to provide some information on the migration process. All WSO2 users are provided with a grace period before we switch old products into the new update model. So we expect everyone to migrate to the new model within this period. And migrating uh, is as simple as switching to a new binary in most cases. Uh, if you do face issues during the migration, please contact us through Jira and we are always happy to help out in the process. And also as a best practice, we expect you to take uh, frequent updates into your environments. And we also highly recommend the use of configuration management tools such as Puppet and Ansible, or the use of CICD pipeline solutions provided by WSO2 for Kubernetes and AWS. This will help you uh, help the, make the update process more streamlined and avoid the need for repetitive manual tasks uh, involved in the uh, updates. I'll also uh, quickly uh, recap the updates to release timeline. Uh, we'll be releasing uh, this on the 10th of October and we'll be uh, giving an uh, initial grace period. And on the 10th of uh, November, we'll be deprecating one man in place and uh, extending, extending the grace period. And by the 10th of February, update sudato will be the sole update mechanism and the ex extended grace period for one will be ended. And by uh, mid 2021, one and in place will be in the end of cycle, end of life cycle. So that's all we had for you in this webinar. I'd like to thank you for your time on behalf of the presenters and we'll be happy to take some questions and try to answer as many as uh, time permits. All right, so um, I believe that we were able to answer a lot of the questions during the session as well through the chat. But uh, one thing that I want to reiterate is uh, we had a lot of questions asking about the revert hotfix command. So just to uh, clarify, what the revert hotfix command does is it uh, it removes the last applied hotfix uh, in your pack. So you can't revert 
or you can't remove a specific hotfix uh, that you have applied. So let's say that you have applied hotfixes um, one, two, three, four, five. Um, we can't uh, use the revert command to revert hotfix three in the middle because um, uh, if you do that, there's a good chance that um, it could cause uh, some errors. So because of that, what the revert hotfix command will do is it will remove the hotfix number five if we have uh, um, if you have applied five, uh, five hotfixes. Okay, so uh, we also have another question asking, this is uh, regarding Helm charts. Uh, so it is asked, where can we find details on Helm charts for deploying packs along with updates uh, 2.0? Uh, so every time when there is an uh, update, the Docker images will be built on a daily basis, daily basis and that will be uh, updated. So you can use your existing Helm charts and use the latest uh, Docker images. I hope that answered your question. Um, this one question from what version is the uh, update tool available? So the what will happen is uh, like we discussed in the um, details about the releases, uh, all update tool will be available for um, all of the WAM supported products through a, a WAM update. So we will be releasing updates to in another two days so if you uh, so on the 10th of october i believe yeah so if you on the 10th of october if you update a product pack to the latest update level using one or in place it will have the update tool uh, in it so then when you run the update tool uh, for the first time it will migrate or it will um, yeah it will uh, migrate your pack to the new update module Okay, so this is a question regarding the distributed environments. So in a distributed environment, do we have to shut down the whole cluster to update? Uh, or is it possible to take individual instances and upgrade them? Uh, yes, it is possible. Uh, so in the distributed environment, uh, what you can do is, uh, you can, as, as we explained in the uh, sl slides as well, you can update the master node and apply uh, if you are using a configuration management tool then you can as, uh, update the master node and uh, apply the changes to uh, each and every node uh, so you will not need to apply the uh, shut down the whole cluster uh, and even if you are not using a configuration management tool it is still possible to uh, update the instances without shutting down the whole cluster you can uh, update one instance uh, shut down one instance, update it, and start it up, and then shut down the next instance, update it, and then start it up. Um, yes, um, so we have a question. Are the presentation slides available after download? Um, yes, uh, so after this session, we will. I believe that we will share a recording as well as the slides through SlideShare. So this will be available after the end of this presentation. Um, yeah, so there's another question uh, specifically in WSO2 uh, API Manager. We have different profiles like store, dev portal, and all. In a fully distributed API Manager setup, are there any specific commands to issue uh, in updates 2.0 to update different uh, API Manager profiles? Uh, no, so uh, what you could do with the update tool is you could um, update the entire API Manager pack. So what we would recommend is, so if you are running, let's say like a profile optimizer, you can update the pack in an API manage uh, in a setup like uh, in a dev or some staging environment. Uh, update the pack using the update update tool, and then run the profile optimizer. And thereafter, uh, you can test it and then move into production. Okay, so we have uh, another question: whether uh, how can you add custom drop-ins to to the created Docker image? Uh, so if you need to add uh, custom drop-ins, what you can do is you can use a volume mount uh, to your deployment or uh, you can always create your own Docker image with your custom drop-ins, with your custom drop-ins. So there's a question, uh, is it possible to deploy an update into production in blue-green mode with ECS or EKS cluster? Um, so uh, the Deployment type entirely depends on the deployment type specified in the Kubernetes manifests. So if you uh, mention the type of deployment type in your Helm chart, uh, so that's where you, you might have to change it. So it's not related to the Docker image. 
Um, so if you want to go for a blue green deployment, you can always change it in the Kubernetes manifest uh, to have that. So there's another question in a distributed deployment uh, using NFS. Uh, uh, how how can we uh, like uh, when we mount uh, common artifacts from uh, the portal app? How should we perform an update or hotfix in this case? Uh, assuming you're talking about Kubernetes, uh, the uh, uh, the change in Kubernetes is actually minimal because only the image uh, uh, version is going to I mean the image tag is going to change, so it's uh, pretty much the same as before. Uh, so you don't need to make any changes to your NFS. Uh, the new pod will attach to the previous NFS. Hope that answered the question. Uh, so if you do have more questions, you can always post it, post it under the questions tab and uh, uh, we we are always happy to answer those questions. And uh, uh, there there is another question that I also would uh, like to answer. Uh, so so uh, there is a question saying that uh, there are two solutions. One is with the API M310 and uh, uh, another one with the uh, API M260, where in one solution you are using the Docker images, and in the other you are using uh, the update cloud, one package to update. So, as per your understanding, uh, yes, you can uh, use the new update tool uh, to get the new changes as it is and apply the modifications like as how you are doing right now. Uh, so, there's another question. Uh, we built our own base image of WS2 API and warm pack. Uh, does that mean we don't have to, uh, we don't use uh, WS2 image out of the box? So, how do we use the update tool? So, the recommended uh, approach for Docker images is that you make our image the base and then do uh, any file changes on top of that. So, if you're adding an artifact or changing an existing uh, file, uh, it's better if you can use our image as the base and then do your changes so that uh, only your changes will be reflected and you will inherit all the updates from the base image and uh, on, another case would be that uh, you might have a uh, you can use the update tool to build the uh, docker image um yes yeah, so this is another question um what is the url to access the updates portal and what would be the purpose of the WSO to update portal. So the URL, I'll actually share it uh, with everyone uh, along with the answer to this question as well. So the purpose of the updates portal is uh, one thing is you can uh, get to see, uh, you can uh, basically find out information about all of the updates that you have already installed. And also, um, let's say your pack may be a bit out of date. So you could actually go through all of the updates that are available and see uh, how these updates will, the available updates will affect your setup so that is how you could use the um, updates portal um, so yeah um, this is a question is there a way of capturing a restore point that could return you to a previous working version yes so um, like we saw in the demo we could run the command uh, the dash dash revert command to go back to a previous uh, to the previous version so what you could do is if you want to uh, go back to a specific version what you could do is you could uh, run the revert command multiple times until you get to the level that you want uh, i hope that answers your question Okay, so we have another question. So if I have API M260 in my current deployment and uh, just sign the WSO2 subscription, should I use the update tool to update the pack to a newer version or I need to download the new version pack myself? Uh, so you, you do have the WSO2 subscription, which means that uh, you can get WSO2 updates. So the new update tool will be delivered to you through an uh, WAM update. So you can use the same uh, pack that you have and use the WSO2 uh, BAM update and uh, get the update tool. And then you can use the update tool to update your pack to a new version. Um, so there's another question. Is it possible to undo a revert to the product pack? So imagine we are reverting a couple of times and revert 
to one revert one more by mistake. So um, as of right now, um, the tool does not support uh, going um, uh, redoing a revert. So as of right now, what you could do is uh, if you saw during the demo, uh, it copies all of the backups to a specific folder. So you could go through the folder. This is a bit of a manual process, but uh, in such a case, I guess you would have to go through the folder, uh, the backups folder, and then uh, just uh, replace your, the pack that you have with, uh, uh, replace your setup with the pack in the backups folder with, your, uh, with the update that level that you want. Okay, so uh, we also have another question asking, do we need to update in incremental order or can directly jump to latest version if we have a few updates uh, behind? Uh, yes, you can uh, always uh, directly like uh, specify the uh, level along with the update command and uh, that will take you to the latest update version. Mm, so there is no incremental order when it comes to applying updates. Uh, but uh, please, uh, you also have to note, but when it comes to hot fixes, there is always this incremental loader. So assume that you have two hot fixes, one and two, that needs to be applied. Uh, so you can, you should always apply the hot fix one before applying the hot fix two. All right. Um, I guess uh, that is all the questions that we have for now. Um, so if you have any more questions, just uh, feel feel free to. Um, get in touch with us. Uh, we are more than happy to help you out with any questions or issues that you may have. So uh, I would like to thank each and every one of you who were able to join this session. So one last thing that I want to remind everyone is that once you leave this webinar, you will be prompted with a few questions regarding um, some feedback about this session. So we would really appreciate it if you could just take the time to fill it out. So what we will do now is that uh, we will wait for about um, five minutes after this, so that you will have to um, you will have time to answer the uh, questions. So once again, thank you so much for joining this session, and I hope that we get to hear from you soon.